Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this video, I'm going to showcase how to extend service discovery mechanism with a built-in Quarkus capability with store projects. Let's get started. So here's a sample diagram how to summarize store works on your application to make your client server load balance mechanism. So as you can see, for example, the client application sometimes you need to communicate the backend application with the multiple backend application in the distributed architecture. So not single application, which means you need to make sure the backend application are working and then stable and also available. In order to accomplish this architecture, you might need to a physical load balancer between client and backend applications. In a microservice architecture, we need to more the application and programmable driven architecture, such as example, uh, console, which allows to have a service discovery and a service registration mechanism with the Eureka software project on your uh, application side, your microservice application. So Stroke is one of the uh, project or under small I project. It allows the developer to have a client to load balancing capability with your application. Let's take a look at that, how Quarkus integrates small right store project with the Quarkus application. So as an example, this is a demo architecture of how to use a store with the uh, as built-in Quarkus application. As you can see, we have a front-end application and then that uh, call uh, backend REST client. And then the backend application uh, is an example blue and red services already registered in the console server, which it can be running in anywhere. In my demo, I'm going to run this console as a container on my local machine. And then the already embedded uh, built-in store library on your Quarkus application, try to look up your service availability, uh, which he uh, responds from the console server. So this is the really easy way for developer to uh, add the service discovery mechanism with the uh, Quarkus as a built-in capability and features. You don't need to add some kind of another uh, server or another uh, third-party library to make that happen with the same capability. Okay, let's get right into the demo, how it works. I'm going to create a new Quarkus project using Quarkus CLI. Uh, the, as an example, Quarkus stock demo, uh, which is your uh, project name. And I also need to add two more extensions by default which is uh, REST client reactive and another uh, extension of REST is reactive because I'm going to use a reactive application uh, using a uh, creative HTTP server based on Vortex. So now I'm going to uh, open my ID tool uh, to implement more application logic uh, on my Quarkus project. Okay, go to Palm XML just to make sure the two extensions already pulled down my local file systems. And now I'm going to need to add two more uh, extensions. As you can see, this small live project to store capability to implement client-based load balance capabilities. So store service discovery console. So store is not limited to only console integration. You can also add a third party load balancing capability and mechanism such as Kubernetes as well. So I'm going to use a console server and then running the reactive application as an HTTP server based on the port X engine. Okay, so let's go to source directory. I'm going to delete an unnecessary resource file. So first of all, I'm going to create a new directory services to implement two services here. The first service is the blue services and then I'm going to add the application scope as a lazy uh, build. And then uh, I need to define a few configuration. First of all, the blue service support uh, configuration, like a 9000, which is a default. Maybe you can set it by any port available on your local environment. And now I need to need to add, de uh, define new method, any method to listen uh, and uh, create actual HTTP server as a backend application with the reactive way. So using Vertex and then run uh, the create the HTTP server. And then I'm going to add the, uh, the return screen, uh, like a hello from blue, just to make sure this uh, application uh, return from the, this blue service server. So I'm going to just specify this uh, uh, service, the blue and red in the same Quarkus application project, but you can actually 
uh, run the backend application, deep run uh, application uh, independently, like a deep run pod on Kubernetes or a deep run server on your uh, local environment as well. To make a simple demo, I just uh, implement the multiple services in the same project. Okay, here's a red service. I'm going to change it to port like a 9001, and the return context is hello from red. And now I need to implement a registration class uh, inside the Quarks project and a specify configuration here. So name, like a specify console server host and a port. I'm going to you know, define the variable in the application property file uh, just a bit later. So you could actually use a different third party as I already mentioned earlier, but I'm going to use console server at this moment to one of the popular the service discovery and registration uh, uh, project. Okay, I just specify blue and red service port 9000, 9001 already uh, defined in the blue and red service Java class. And here is where we go. We need to add one init method here uh, to register uh, this service into console using console client. To do that, uh, we're going to uh, create a console client with a client option, uh, specify what this calls and the port. And now we're going to add registration, uh, our existing service, blue and Red. So need to specify a port and address. Well, I'm gonna run my console server, my local host. That's why I specify the address as a local host. And the send name is a my dash service. You could specify any service name, but you need to make sure this service name on your application properly file. The blue and red. Okay, it's good. And I'm gonna try to create a new interface uh, to. Uh, you the register uh, the rest client to uh, import to our uh, console server. So here is a one important thing you need to uh, define the base URL using store protocol as you can see and my service already registered with that name on my registration class. If you specify another name like a, a console service you need to with the same variable here the store, uh, colon slash slash uh, your console dash service as an example. Okay, now I need to add one double method here, just get the return, uh, like a hello from red, hello from green, the text we already implement in the blue and green, blue and red services. Okay, so the last step, I'm gonna need to create a new resource, the RESTful API Java class, and then Annotation REST client because we're going to call the interface. And here we go the one uh, public method, like a string return code, and the invoke and just the interface the call. It looks good. In the last step, we need to specify the actual variable of the console server and the host file, etc. And also, I need to specify the store uh, configuration. The same thing, the service name, store the service name and service discovery, which we're going to use console. And then another configuration in the console server host, which is a local host, so which is really the same, the console configuration. And then port 85 on the red, which is the default port name. You can actually use different port, which is available on your local environment. And the long robin is one of the popular mechanisms for your service discovery on your local machine. And it's not just only local machine, but it's another the environment. So I'm going to run the console server using Docker container with the 8500 port, which already uh, defined our application on the Quarkus project. So you can see the console server is just started. Then I'm going to switch under the terminal window to run the Quarkus dev mode which is a really great feature for developers to have live coding capabilities. All right, it takes a few seconds to start up. And then once our Quarkus application gets started, we're gonna switch another terminal window uh, to invoke endpoint. I'm gonna try to use a while uh, command line to keep running uh, the endpoint, which showcases uh, the round robin mechanism. 
All right, let's try to do that. Oh, we got some error. So you know, so actually, I print some error code intentionally during my application implementation. Let's try to figure it out with the live coding capability. So this is a really awesome feature uh, to trace error logs on the Quarkus environment. You can see the null service found error logs. So which means that we need to investigate the registration class. I just deleted the one and then just copy. And the previously, I actually set port in blue for the REST services as well. And also, I uh, uh, omitted uh, the observe annotation to make this registration as a reactive way. Now we're going to uh, all the, the same endpoint. And then now you can see uh, the run will be mechanism to 50% and 50% code and then the service A, service B. So, as you can see, you can see a blue, red, blue, red in a row. So this is a totally working your backend service as a round robin mechanism. Hopefully you enjoyed how to implement service discovery mechanism with the Quarkus with the built-in store capability. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.